find out what's making you sick and how to heal. Anthony William is the medical medium. Hello, I'm Anthony William. You're listening to the Medical Medium Radio Show, where each week we bring the most advanced information in healing, decades ahead of what's out there now. Today's show is about nature, how it can help us heal. Nature therapy is what I call it. And we all need that in our lives. We all need nature therapy. We all need healing on all kinds of different areas and ways we can possibly do it. Healing isn't just one thing only. It's other things too. It's other things too. Have you had any nature in your life? You know, and if you can't, and you can't get any nature in your life, or you just haven't had nature in your life for some reason, or you just don't have a way to do it, there's a way to do it. Maybe we can figure something out, even for people who are just maybe in a city or something, and they don't even see the, you know, they don't even see trees too often, and they're busy, and they're working, or they're trying to just do other things. You know, we can figure something out. There's got to be a way of getting incorporating nature in our lives in some way. We're going to talk about like different kind of nature meditations, where they're meditating in a way where they can help us heal in so many ways, including spiritually, spiritually on a soul level too. You know, the thing is with our soul, you know, I haven't talked about our souls recently in the whole, in all, all of that, but our souls can get injured along the way on planet earth in this life. I mean, this is not an easy place to live in. I mean, if anybody ever says this is an easy place to live in, then either they've had it pretty good for a little while (laughs) and they haven't experienced a bump or a pothole yet. They haven't experienced a hardship yet. They haven't experienced a tough time yet. And and I don't want anybody experiencing that. If we can go through life without any bumps and bruises, man, (laughs) God bless you. That would be amazing. But you know what? Life is, is, is not really like that. And sometimes we get, sometimes some of us get affected by things um, that somebody else would not be affected by. And, you know, I mean, or vice versa or whatever. It's, it's amazing how it works. But healing is about all kinds of different things. So we do need some healing for our soul and healing for our spirit and healing for our heart. And those are three different things, by the way. Spirit is not your soul, just so you know, that is not the same thing there. And I tell you know, and what happens is that we have our soul and our soul resides inside of our mind, inside of our head, inside of our brain. That's where the soul is. And then spirit of the person is actually the will, the will of the soul. So that's the will to want to push through and persevere the will to want to pick up a celery juice glass and drink it, the will to say, you know what, I want to get through this day, the will to want to do anything, the will to want to exercise, the will to want to be a better person, the will to want to help others, the will to just stay alive, the will to push through our illnesses, the will to, it's, it's, it, that's the spirit. That's your spirit. That's what that is. And our soul, our soul, that's inside of our mind, our brain, that's in our head, that's our soul. And, you know, our soul is what, what it, it's the part that goes with us, meaning it goes, it goes, it leaves here when we're, when we, when we're gone down the road, our soul leaves here. Okay. <laughs> and it goes up to a place and that's what happens with our soul. And I'm going to talk, maybe talk about a little bit of that too. And, and then there's our heart. Our heart is a physical record. So our heart is a physical, physical, it's an organ. It's a physical organ. It's a record of a lot of what we've been through. It also, it's a catalyst to if you're a good person. It's a catalyst to if you're not a good person. And I know all of you guys are good people, absolutely. And, you know, but 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 there are some, you know, some dark forces. I mean, we know that. And look at the things that happen on on planet Earth. I mean, come on. I mean, there is some destruction and there is... There is horrific things that are happening that have been happening for centuries and for decades. And there, there is, there's terrible things that happen in this world. Absolutely. And so, 
So there is this darkness, there is this negativity out there without a doubt, and then the light we have that we have that you have has to shine bright. We have to shine bright and there's light and darkness and we have to always know that too. So it's important to keep our souls strong and healthy. It's important to keep our spirit strong, the will to want to say, hey, I work for the light, the will, I work for God. And if that doesn't work for you, God, then I work for the light that I work for, you know, I work for something else. You know, I mean, people, everybody has a different belief or a different, you know, a different sense or feeling of what they think they're doing here and what what's happening in the ether and what's happening, whether they believe in something or not. That, you know, everybody has a different, different take on things. But the heart is this record because there's people with, with, with injury. There's people emotionally injured out there in the world that someone would say, hey, that, that person's a bad person. But they're not a bad person. They just been through a lot. They've been through a lot. You know, I've seen that a lot happen over the years. You know, I've talked to a lot of families and everything else, and they'll be like, yeah, well, you know, he he's just not a great person. I mean, he does things that, you know, stress us out, or, or you know, she's not a great person. She does things that stress us out. Look what she's doing. No, no, there's just injuries there. There's soul injuries. It doesn't mean we have a bad person there. It doesn't mean because the heart tells a different story. It's that physical record, that physical record that tells a different story. So whatever you believe in that's in the ether, whatever you believe in that's in the universe, whatever you believe that's up there in heaven, whatever you believe, whatever you believe, whether it's God, whether it's just the heavenly angels and that's it, or whether it's just the universe and the universe is just this all-knowing universe and whatever it is that you you think or you believe your heart, your physical heart holds a record that's seen up above. It's seen up above because God knows, God knows, or the light knows, or the universe knows. Okay? I mean, I, 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 I you know, I believe in God. I call, I, I call God, God, but this, you know, that's, but, but I also believe, I believe in what someone else said. Someone was telling me the other day and said, you know what? I, I don't, it's not God that's up there. I mean, it's not a, it's not God. I said, well, no, listen, I, listen, t- tell me, tell me, I, you know, sh- what's, what are you think, thinking? What are you saying? And they were like, well, no, I just believe it's like this, this ball of powerful light, and it's it's just this you know universal light that we all can touch and be a part of. I said, okay, okay, totally. I said, I said, but with that, right? Well, you got to connect with that. I said, you have to connect with that. And this person said to me, no, I, I am. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. And I and and I said, and you have to feel that that light is actually healing. That that light knows who you are. And this person said, you know what? I can, I can feel that. Absolutely. That the light actually has information in it, knowing you are a good hearted soul. You're a good being and you're of the light too. And you know, and it's, it's kind of, you know, and, and this person was like, you know what? That's, that's, that's how I feel. And, you know, and how I, you know, how I view things is, you know, is different than someone else can view things. Absolutely. We all have a different belief. I was talking to another person too, and this other person I was talking to said, well, you know, there's, there's no God or, I, you know, I really believe in lots of gods and there's lots of gods and, and all of this different stuff. And I was like, hey, you know, totally, I, you know, you know, hey, tell me about it. And this person was telling me all about how they felt about that. Um, I had this other person says, well, I just believe in the universe. I believe the universe has all the answers and, and that's what's going on there. Um, and then I talked to another person. This another person is, is like, well, there's nothing up there. There's nothing up there at all. And I said, but don't you feel like, don't you feel like there's gotta be something? And this person's like, I don't think there's nothing up there. And so I said, I said, okay, wait a minute. You got to you got millions and millions and millions of years that have gone by, millions of years that have gone by, okay? Millions, right? On this planet alone, what about other planets too? Millions of years. So you mean to tell me that for some reason it's just a freak accident, it's just a fluke that you're at the 
the, at the frontier of time, that you're at the head of time right now, that you and I right now, out of all the people that have tr- passed and transpired through the ages, all the people that have come and gone in the thousands of years and, and even millions of years, because nobody, nobody knows you know, the, the past millions of years, including different planets. I mean, all of the people that could be and have been and all of the souls that have been, why in this moment, which is now, which is time as of now, the present time, the time we're in, in this moment right here, how is it possible you've been chosen to be here in this present moment on the frontier of time with me? How is that possible? So there has to be sense There has to be some kind of order. There has to be some kind of formation. There has to be something going on. And this person said, well, you know what? I didn't believe in anything at all. I just thought, you know, we were just, we're just this physical being that's born here and we're just, we just live, we die and that's it. And this person said, you know what? I've never heard it like that before. I've never heard it like that before ever. And this person came back to me another time. He got a hold of me and said, you know what? I'm starting to believe there's something more. I'm starting to believe there's something more. And, you know, in my mind, in that moment, I think about the angelic moments that I've seen, meaning with, with, with angels as far as experiences I've had in my life, experiences that I've known people have had where they've seen angels and angels have literally saved their lives and, and, and loved ones' lives. Like I've, I've, the stories and, you know, and as this person's telling me and I wanted to just say, oh my God, oh my God, you wouldn't believe the angels and all the different people that have healed and the people that have used angels to guide them and everything else. Of course there's something more. Of course there's something more. And, and I was, I was trying to contain myself a little bit because I was so excited. I was so excited. And this person said, you know, I do believe there's something more because I thought about it. I thought about it all night long. I woke up and then fell asleep. I woke up and fell asleep. I woke up and fell asleep. And I thought, A.W. Anthony, I thought, hey, you know, it, it, you're right. You're right. There has to be something else. Why am I here at the frontier of time? Why here am I at the beginning of time? Out of all the people, well, it just happened. It happened magically. How does that work? And I said, that's because there is some power. There is a power somewhere, a power source somewhere. I view it as God. That's how I view it. Okay. That's, you know, that's why I say, God bless you. I, I, I view it as God. That's how I do it. But you know what? You know, other people view it differently. I mean, I totally respect that. Not only respect that, I want to hear about it. I want to know, wait a minute, tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what, what you're getting. Tell me what hits you got. You know, it's, 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 it's funny, but this person is like just changed from that alone. And now they're looking into things. You know, they're like, wait a minute. I mean, you know, there is some kind of order up there in the universe, in the ether. There is some kind of power source. There is more than what we just, we're just what? We're just off on a floating rock. We're on a floating rock. Okay. And we're, and we, and we're, we happen to be able to think and we're on a floating rock and, just, you know what I mean? and that's it. That's it. We're on a floating rock and that's it in a massive universe. <laughs> in a galaxy, in a massive universe. And then I guess that's it. You just live and, you know, your soul goes nowhere. There is no soul. No one's got any souls, I guess, right? I mean, I don't know. We're just on a floating rock. And we're just a living creature walking around with no soul. And and so I guess we're just, I don't know, we're all soulless or something? And we're just a soul doesn't go anywhere or whatnot and, and everything? I mean, come on. Come on, come on, come on. And so so I just want to tell you a little bit more about the soul and a little bit more about the spirit and the heart. So we're saying before that the spirit, which confuses everybody, the spirit is just your will. That's the will of the soul. That's your physical strength. It's your physical capability and then the will and the wanting to actually live. The wanting to do something. 
the wanting to try to accomplish something, even at your weakest moment, even when you're struggling, even when you're in survival mode, even if you have a hardship and you're not feeling good and you're taking one day at a time and you're just you're just pushing through your aches and pains, your fatigue, your neurological fatigue, your sickness, your weakness, whatever it is that's going on, your headaches, your migraines, your everything. And and your hardships too. And you wake up in the morning and you say, I want to stay alive. I want to stay alive. And I want to push through. And I want to fight through it. And I want to get through this. And you just do it. And you just, that's your will. And you put on your pants. And you put on your shoes, man. And you just like you push out of your room in the morning and you say, okay, I don't have it easy or I never had it easy or maybe things were going good one time and they weren't going good and and now I'm sick and I'm working on my healing process and hey, I'm going to go get some food and and make a little bit of a recipe or I'm going to go get some food and try to get inspired and maybe eat a little better or I'm just going to hop in my car and and, and do the errands I need to do or I'm just going to push through the day the best I can in any way I can. The will is the spirit. That's your spirit doing it right there. And you could have the spirit kicked out of you and you can have the spirit knocked the heck out of you. And damn right. I've seen the spirit knocked out of people, man, where they're, they're just, it's slammed out of them. The spirit gets knocked out of people and, and yeah, it's not good. It's not good. And but that's the spirit. And we gotta keep our spirit strong in any way because that's the will power, the will of our soul. And in our soul, our soul can get tampered with here. It can get injured. It can get fractured. It, have you ever been allergic to somebody? That's a that's a very mild starting to get a very mild like soul soul injury there. Really, really mild. You get allergic to somebody. Or you get allergic to something. I don't mean like a peanut. I'm not talking about a peanut being allergic to a peanut. I'm talking about, and that's not funny being allergic to peanuts. I've had to help people a lot with that over the years. Um, but I'm just saying, it's not like being allergic to a strawberry, which, you know, that's a whole other thing on its own. But it's like, you know, it's, it's or ragweed or allergic to something, or pollen. I mean, this is, I'm talking about allergic to someone, or, or you know, you, you're being not treated good, or you know, you were taken advantage of, a not in some way, or trust was broken, or betrayal occurred. Whatever it is, these are injuries on the soul. The soul can get injured. It can fracture easily. It's the way it works on planet Earth. It's why people do things they do. They've been hurt before. You never heard of that before? Someone's been burned. Hey, man, I've been burned before. I've been burned by that by that guy. I've been burned by that person. I've been burned by, you know, my friend, you know, she burned me, you know, whatever it is. It's, you know, she, she totally broke my trust. She did something that she wasn't supposed to. He did something. We've been friends for 10 years and he did something he wasn't supposed to. And he knew it, and it hurt my feelings and he knew it was going to hurt my feelings, whatever that is. It could be in high school. It could be in grade school. It could be in in, in college, it could be uh, in life, it could be past that, it could be anything, it could be whatever it is, it could be at work, at the office, whatever it is, it could be a coworker trying to get a leg up, and then and then kissing up to the boss, and then throwing you under the bus. How many people have been thrown under the bus? It can hurt, it could sting, and then what happens is you get you get kind of like a reaction where you're, you know, not not just even a PTSD, but you get this reaction. This is this is the soul taking hits and jabs. It's not the spirit taking hits and jabs so much, but it's the soul taking hits and jabs and getting kicked a little bit. That's right. It's the soul. What about people in relationships that have had really bad relationships over the years? I've helped so many people through all that. they bad, bad relationships. It's just terrible relationships. And then they finally find somebody that they really love or something, but they're so wounded that the, the wounds are coming out and the other person's like, oh my God. I, what do you mean? I, I don't even get this, or I didn't do that, or what's happening and what's not. And that happens too because people get wounded. They get wounded. What's wounded? What is wounded? Is it just an emotional wound? It's a soul wound. 
It's a soul wound. That's why nature therapy is so critical. That's why I'm talking about nature therapy today because it helps these soul wounds. You get your trust broken. You get in bad relationships. And I'm not just talking about... I'm not talking about relationships that are intimate, which is, yeah, bad relationships with relationships that are intimate. I'm talking about relationships that are even friendships, long-term friendships, short-term friendships, but you can get injured and wounded along the way because people have, guess what, injures and injured, they're injured and wounded. Whether they were raised in a family that somehow injured them, whether they had, they were injured at school, whether they were injured somewhere, they have their own emotional wounds in their soul. People are filled with them. And then you're in a friendship with someone and then their wounds come out and it wounds you. And then you, now you're like sensitive and then you, and then you get into this new relationship, whether it's a relationship, whatever, a, a, a marriage or a girlfriend, boyfriend relationship, a partnership, whatever it is, a business partnership. It could even be business and just nothing but business, not even personal. And then, and then your wounds come out and it's just because your soul ha- needs healing because yes, the injuries happen to the soul and they really do. And they do, and they can collect over time. You can get soul injuries all along the way, right down from your family all the way up, all the way up to friends and partners and and everything under the sun. And we have to clear that. We have to keep your soul clean. And we have to know that your soul being injured is just expected down here. Not, Not, you know, some people a lot worse. Some people very mild. But it's expected. Something is expected in some way. And we kind of get, whoa, I I didn't know that. I didn't, you know, whoa, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that was going to happen to me. I didn't know I'd have to just, I can't trust this person anymore. I can't believe they did that. And oh my God, I can't shake it. I lost two nights of sleep and I can't shake it because I, I just can't even believe it. And, you know, your soul is just in shock. Your soul is in shock. And then the will, the will, which is your spirit, just gets you up in the morning and you say, you know, the heck with it. And you dust off your pants, man. You dust off your pants and you're dusting it off and you're just like, yeah. And you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you dust off your pants and you're like, I'm going to push through my will to survive, my will to get through this, my will to not get heartbroken so bad, my will to not get hurt, and my will for my soul to be protected. But what if you can't brush it off so easy? You need ways to heal it. You need ways to heal it. You really do. I like gazing at the stars, stargazing. That's what I like to do. You know, I get hurt, little broken trust somewhere. A backstabbing or anything or betrayal or whatever happens in my life, you know, hearing spirit my whole life and having to help people my whole life has not been easy. It's not been an easy journey. There's nothing been easy about it. And it's, it's just, you know, I mean, filled with a lot, a lot of hardship, filled with a lot of hardship. And I've always used gazing gazing at the stars to just completely realign the soul, make it strong so it can't be busted, so it can't be fractured, it can't be broken down, it can't be busted up. That's right. That's right. So gazing at the stars, all it takes is one minute, one minute. You believe that one minute of your time? You guys believe that one minute? This one minute? Just looking at the stars at night, if you see a little patch of stars out there, out there, you just one minute you look at it. And you know what you do when you look at those stars? You say, there's a peace, there's an essence of my soul that's kept by heaven. That's how I see it. That's kept by heaven, okay? That's kept by the source that's kept by God, that's kept whatever you want to see it as. You want to see kept by the universe, kept by the universe. You want to see it kept by the light, kept by the light, okay? I Just whatever. If there's a peace, there's a peace of your soul, like an essence of it that's up there behind the stars. Because that's where we go when we leave here. That's where we go when we leave here. We go past the stars. Our soul travels past the stars. That's where it goes. And it goes to a place past the stars, which I call, which I call heaven. And it goes to, the, goes to the heavens. It goes way up there. 
It goes way up there. That's where it goes when we leave here. But there's a little piece. In essence, it's already there. Where we came from. You think we came from this molten lava planet? Do you think that's where we came from? You think our soul came out of the pit of this planet? You think, where do you think our soul came from? Came from up there. Our soul came from up there. And what happens is, there's a little piece, a little essence up there, just sitting up there. It's there in case you get too damaged here, but you can actually connect to it to restore. You look at the stars and you look past those stars and you look past those stars and you say, I know that I have a home up there too. I have a home way up there too. And there's a, li- there's a little piece of my soul sitting up there, like a little piece protected, meaning like the, the, basically the essence of it is protected up there. And I can connect to it right now and start restoring my right restart restoring my soul right now. Just connect with it. Just one minute, you just gotta look up there and do that's all it takes. And bam, I'm ready to take on the day the next day. I wake up in the morning, I'm like, you can't mess with me. I don't care. You can't mess with me. Yeah, I hear a voice perfectly clear. It tells me what's wrong with everybody. I've done thousands and thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of readings since I was a child. Yeah. Too bad. You don't like it? Too bad. That's right. Okay? You don't like that at all? People lined up at the door when I was a child working on people. You don't like all that I've done and all the different, all since growing up and all the readings I had to do is when I was 13, 14, 15 years old and 16 and 17 years old. And then when I opened up my office full time and worked on 50 people a day, seven days a week, year after year after year without even a half a day off. And moms were bringing their their one and two year olds in two o'clock in the morning at night with fevers of 104 degrees, and 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 begging for help. And I never slept a wink for year after year, and had and and worked for decades and helped thousands and thousands of people heal, and then put the information in the book so people can find their way. You don't like it? Too bad because I looked at the stars, and I and I connected to the essence of my soul. And it restored me and I'm ready to take on the day because my willpower is stronger than it was the day before. And you can't break my spirit. You can't break it. And if you think I haven't had hard times, think again. Man, I've slipped on my ass before. I've done it. I've slipped on my ass a couple of times. And it hurt. I mean, I, I'm, I'm human all the same is everybody else. And keeping that spirit strong is critical. Someone said to me, but you hear spirit. You you, you have nothing to worry about. Yeah, but I feel. I feel what everybody's pain is. I feel what people go through. I feel my own pain. I feel everything. Of course, I'm a human, human being, and I hear a voice, and hearing a voice perfectly clear, nonstop all day from an outside source. Someone said to me, well, you hear a voice, oh, that, that, that's great. Wonder what that means. Yeah, it's on an outside source. I could literally take my hand and start blocking it away a little bit. I used to put airplugs in, and but still you can hear the voice a little bit, just like when someone's standing next to you with airplugs and you got airplugs in your ears, you, you can still hear them. That's why people stick their fingers in the ears and make noise with their mouth going la, 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 la when they don't want to hear somebody because you can put your fingers in your ears and you can still hear people talking. And so, and the voice I've heard has saved a lot of lives over the years. Not me, I haven't, but the voice has saved a lot of lives. And you know what? I need that spirit restored just like all you guys need your spirit stores for all your gifts and all the things you do and all the accomplishments you make on a daily basis and all the love you have in your heart and all the compassion you have. You need your spirit strong and you need your soul reignited and strengthened to push through the day. Because I know how amazing you are. I know how incredible you are. I talk to people, they have gifts. I mean, I've seen people do things that I I could never do in a million years. And it makes hearing spirit like like nothing, meaning like not a big deal. 
seeing people do some really amazing things and they have gifts to do different things in life. And, and, you know, and we all, I mean, it could be anything, the smallest thing. And I've seen people do, and I get totally knocked off my feet about it. I mean, it's amazing. I'm talking about even making the best tasting dish I've ever tasted in my life. It's like, how do you do that? I mean, the best tasting recipe, it's, oh my God, whoa, it's like somebody's gifted when they can do that. It's really amazing. I see a lot of people doing that, and I've tasted a lot of different dishes over the years, and it's just like, oh my God, that's mind-blowing. Like, I couldn't, that, that, the flavor is unbelievable. You're gifted, and it's like, you know what? You know what? It's, we all need that soul restored. We do. We get injured along the way. Betrayal is one of them. It's the worst. Even if it was 20 years ago, it's the worst. Betrayal is the worst. It's such a, such a wound. It's such a jab. It's such a jab. Betrayal with no compassion, no love behind it. Or being used. That's a bad one. That's a rough one. Being used is brutal. Whether you know you were or not, whether you knew it or not and you were used, it's a tough one. Hurts the soul. But we got to dust ourselves off. We got to push forward. We got to keep our spirit strong. I like to gaze up at the stars at night. I like to do it for like five minutes, you know? I kind of get this lawn chair thingy, you know, this like, it was like a $25 like lawn chair thing. And you just, I opened it up so I could kind of lean back. So I don't like, you You know what I mean? So you don't stress your neck out, like, like looking straight up at the sky. And I lay on it and I just, I look for five minutes, 10 minutes. And I just look out there. And sometimes you see a falling star. Sometimes you see a falling star. It's just, it's the best thing ever. And I, and, I, and I know the essence, this is a little piece of essence of my soul that's out above the ether. It's way up in there. It's in the heavens and that God knows all about it. It's been protected. So if mine gets damaged down here, that it's protected. And I like to draw from it and be like, you know what? I need some restoring. I need some restoring. It's powerful. You don't think it's powerful? No, I, I try it. Just make sure you try it. You'll see how powerful it is. You'll see. You'll see. And then between getting injured and on, 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 out here in the world in different ways emotionally, another thing I like to do is we lose. Tr- see, what happens is we lose trust. And I've said this before in the past, maybe in a really, really old show three years ago. But, you know, the trust that gets broken in every capacity here. It's unbelievable. People, they just, you know, they, they, they just, yeah, break trust. It's like unbelievable. You guys know you must have had it happen once in your life. And guess what? All you need to do is have it happen once. It's all you need to do is once. Once is just, <laughs> is enough. Believe me. And the trust, when the trust is broken, it hurts could have been just a relationship. It could have been a friendship. It could have been, you know, some kind of betrayal in a relationship once again. It could have been anything and just trust is broken. It could have been really simplistic too and small. Could have been a loved one, could have been a family member, could be a friend, could be a cousin, whatever it is, and just trust is broken and it hurts. It stings. But it's not just that. Trust is broken outside of all of that, where you're applying to something. You're applying. You feel like you're going to get into this university. You feel like you're going to get into this college and you just, but you don't get in and you get turned down. It's like you just start losing, losing trust in yourself. You lose trust in yourself. It's like losing faith in yourself. You just start losing. That's just, you know, I, I've, I've seen, I've seen young people, you know, say to me, I, I applied for like these colleges, I couldn't get in and it just, it broke my heart. It just, I just don't even want to apply anymore. I, I've seen that happen. Uh, and, you know, it's, that's just one thing. It's not even, I'm talking about so many things. You don't trust, people don't trust themselves, especially if they even have addictions too. You're tra- you break your own trust nonstop with your own addictions. There's so many addictions you can have. That breaks trust. Trust breaks in every aspect of our life. It's not even, God, if we try to apply for a job and we just, we do, or we get a job and we get let go or fired and we don't trust ourselves and, or we did an amazing job and got let go for no reason. And then we don't trust anybody who hires us anymore. How about that one? I've seen that one all the time out there. Like I've seen that all the time out there. Like it can go on. I'm not even touching, touching the amount of trust breakage. 
I'm just only grazing some of the trust issues, just grazing them. I'm not even going into them deep. But you know what I like to do? When trust breaks, it breaks in the soul. That becomes a soul injury. It breaks in the soul and it hurts the soul. It hurts it. It stings it. And so what I like to do is the sunset meditation. Some of you guys who have been with me for a long time know the sunset meditation. So many of you just, you know, you've you probably never even heard of it. A sunset meditation is one of my favorite. It's when you know the sun is setting and you know why it's setting. It's setting to rebuild your trust. Now, the sun sets every day, and if you don't know why you're, you're, you care about it setting or anything like that, it's not going to rebuild your trust. You have to be consciously connected to the sun setting. If you're consciously connected to the sun setting, you don't even have to be watching the sun setting. You can just know the time it's setting. You can just think about it setting. When the sun is setting, okay, when it's setting down, that's you got to connect to it in that moment. you got to connect to it in the moment because what you're connecting to is a friend, an old friend. See, friends can let us down. People can let us down. People, anybody, anything can let us down. But the sun is always going to be around for us. It's always going to be around for us. It's that old friend that the human race has known and relied on for millions of years, for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. The human race has been relying on the sun for forever, forever. That's how long this human race has been relying on the sun. It's a reliable source. It's a reliable source. It's going to set it's going to rise. And what it's setting, it's like an old friend is just going away. And you, you, it almost triggers off the trust issue right there. It triggers off the trust wounds that are inside the soul. A big part of why people have soul injuries, I'm telling you right now. And as that sun is setting and you're sitting there on the beach or you're sitting there, whatever, wherever you are, and you know, it could be anywhere in a field. It could be at home. It could be out in your backyard. It could be in your apartment. It could be your, out your apartment window. It could be anywhere. And the sun is setting... And that's your old friend that your soul has known for a very long time. And the human race has known for a very long time. And your old friend is giving up on you. He or she is setting and starting to go down. And it's going to trigger a little bit of a, whoa, it's the end of the day. Whoa, a little bit of sadness. Whoa. And if you connect to the trust aspect of, of that, of just, you know, what you've been through in your life or the tough times or the soul injuries. If you connect it for a few seconds, and if you don't connect to it, that's fine. Just connect to the sun setting. That's all you need to do. And knowing that you're building up your soul, that's all you have to do. Just don't even think about anything, but you're building up your soul in the sun setting and the sun setting. And as it's setting down, it goes down. And it's like an old friend that kind of lets you down in a way. And then the next morning, you don't even have to see it rising. Your consciousness is connected to the sun rising. And the minute it rises, it's not an old friend that lets you down. It's nobody that to let you down anymore. It's nobody that backstabbed you or betrayed you or did something or hurt you. There's nobody that cheated on you. It's nobody that did anything. It's nobody, whatever. It's literally the sun coming back up. And it ignites trust a little bit at a time inside the soul. Whether you like it or not or know it or not, it does. I mean, you have to know the exercise for it to work. It doesn't do it without knowing the exercise. But if you know the exercise, it does it a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Meaning like you may not be feeling it yet, but you will. And your soul will get stronger because of it. You go watch sunsets. You do three sunsets a week. It'd be powerful. Believe me, it's a powerful way to help heal the soul. And guess what? Your spirit gets stronger and your will, your will to fight for what you believe in, even on the most simplistic, smallest, minute, but important ways in your life. The spirit to to just want to do good things like you've always wanted to do. Just whatever, the spirit to just get up and breathe and take a deep breath during your chronic illness until you heal. The spirit to want to get to the other side of your healing with your chronic illness. You could build your spirit. And all this is all this matters. It's that powerful. It's that powerful. 
And, you know, I like the waves on the beach, too. If you could ever get to a beach at a lake or you could ever get to a beach in the ocean, a lot of people don't have that option. They're in, they're in different parts of the world, and they can't get to the water. They can't get to the ocean side. But maybe someday they can one day in their life. And remember this, the power of this. And if you can't get to a beach, maybe you can get to a stream, like a safe stream, like a just a little stream or something like that, or a big stream. But don't go in this. Don't go in. You don't have to go in the stream or anything like that. I don't want you getting washed away if it's this big, big stream, but you can go to the side of a river bank and you can sit there, whatever it is that you think, maybe at a park where there's water or something like that. But when you do the beach and the waves are coming in and you're sitting there doing the, the waves on the beach meditation, which I think is one of the most powerful. Now, I don't get a chance to get to the beach a lot, but I'm going to try to get to the beach a couple of times this year. This, this the rest of this year. Somehow I'm going to get to a beach. I've been working so hard and stuff and everything. I just got to get to a beach. I got to do the waves on the beach meditation. And what it is, think about the fact that your soul needs healing as you're sitting on that beach. Think about the fact that your spirit needs to be strengthened and rebuilt. Think about your heart needs to be healed. Think about all these things. And as the waves come up, they're coming up clean and pure and, and perfect. And as the waves come up, they then grab on to, you don't have to be in the water. They grab on to the toxic injuries. They grab on to the emotional wounds. They grab on to the wounds that are in the soul as you're watching the waves come up. And as the waves come up, they saturate the soul and the consciousness and your mind and your your, your thoughts. They, they actually, it's a meditation that's so powerful. The waves come up and they saturate it and they grab on to that stuff that's poisonous. And the waves pull that poison out and those toxins out and bring it back to the ocean and carries it away and destroys it. Carries it away and destroys it. And guess what? A new wave comes right after that clean and clear. <sighs> clean, pristine, beautiful wave comes up. And that comes up again and it grabs onto more of that. More of that toxic injury, more of the soul wounds, more of the soul stuff, more of the soul fracturing stuff, more of the pain, more of the suffering, more of all of it. This is an aspect of healing to help you physically heal the, the, the Epstein bars, physically heal the shingles, physically heal all the different bacteria, the strep bacteria, physically healing all the different wounds and stuff. And, and then the water recedes back while you're sitting on the beach and it takes another round of it out to the ocean and destroys it. That's right. And a new wave comes fresh and clean again as it comes up. It comes up and it reaches you and it reaches your soul and your consciousness and your mind. And it grabs onto more poisons, more toxins and starts to drag them away. It cleanses you powerful soul healing waves on the beach meditation that I love. That's the kind of meditation I was taught by spirit. These are the meditations I was taught by spirit. I wasn't taught to sit there and that's fine. You want to sit there and cross your fingers and cross your legs and try to, and you try to meditate and with a group of people, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. People love that. I mean, I'm seeing people do that every day out there. It's, 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 it's great, but that's not the kind of meditations that I was trained by spirit I was trained meditations to heal injuries from people being physically ill, sick with chronic illness and never hurt and totally misunderstood and it gives them wounds emotionally to people that have been, that have been misunderstood and, and taken for granted and, and, and with their sicknesses and their, and their symptoms and their illnesses and never getting answers, even still to today. And, and then their wound, they get the wounds and they get the hurt. And spirit loves these meditations to help people like that. And they have these meditations to help anybody with emotional wounds that don't have anything physically wrong. And they're perfectly fine physically. And they don't really have meaning like they, oh, everybody has something wrong. I'm going to tell you right now. There's always something brewing in somebody because we all don't, we all, you know, we never eat the way we're supposed to. We never do all the things we're supposed to. It's just the way life works. We're pushed to the max. We're, you know, everything. So there's always something that could be brewing in somebody that we have to keep on and make sure protect ourselves with. That's why I like the celery juice and everything else to protect people, to keep them healthy, even when they're not sick. And But the thing is, the emotional side to it, the emotional wounds, all the emotional stuff I'm talking about, 
These are powerful meditations for all of that. Powerful ways to restore the soul and the spirit and the heart. These are the things that I've been taught that are, are they're more stronger and powerful than sitting there. Sitting there, meditating, and trying to control your mind. I mean, that's fine too. Of course, you want to do that's fine. But these are, I found these to be more powerful and more helpful for people because you know why? They restore the soul. They restore the soul. It's not about battling your own mind and battling your own thoughts. Because if you're going to sit there and battle your own mind and battle your own thoughts, I mean, you want to do that, that's fine. That, that, that's sure. I mean, it's a challenge. You could do it. But I'd rather restore the soul. I'd rather restore the soul. I mean, that's, that's just my, you know, what I've been trained to, to, to have people do so they can heal. And then there's the trees. And then there's nature. You go on a hike or you just go into a park and you see trees or you're in your yard or you're at your apartment complex and you see trees and you... And you stand there on this little spigot of grass if you have to, this little lot of grass, or you're, you're somewhere else in a field in nature or wherever it is that you can be. And you envision roots, just like the trees have roots growing out of your feet. This is a powerful meditation. I know you guys probably, many of you probably know this one already that I've, that I've talked about, but I like this one because I still use it. I still use it. I was just recently outside in the woods for a little while. I was standing there and I had trees that were nearby and I looked at those trees and I said to spirit, how deep are those roots? And you can ask angels, you can say angels, how deep are those roots and get it and just get a envision on how deep those roots are. And then envision roots growing out of your feet right through the earth, like rooting into the earth and you're standing there you can have your eyes closed. You can have your eyes open. You can put your arms out. You can put your arms down. Envision those roots growing out of your feet while you're standing there. Be barefooted. If you can't be barefooted, be in your sandals. If you can't be in your sandals, be in your boots. If it's wintertime and you're walking through the woods on a little hiking trail in a park, be in your boots. Whatever it is, stand there as roots are growing through your feet into the earth. And then when you're ready, snap them off. Snap them off. Step away and break the roots off your feet, but envision those roots deep into the earth. See those roots deep into the earth. Know those roots are deep into the earth. I'll tell you why. Do not forget where you left them. Do not forget where you left them because when you leave and you go home, one of the most powerful restorative soul techniques, this is another really powerful one, is all you have to do is go envision where those roots were. Envision that spot you were in. Envision that hiking trail. Envision that field. Envision that park where your roots were snapped off and left down in there. I know that sounds funny, snapped off. Where your roots were broken off and down into the earth and envision that. When you're at the office, think about where your roots are. Think about that. Instantly, instantly, instantly helps restore the soul. It's incredible, really. And then I like the birds. I can't get enough of birds. That's the one thing. Birds never let me down. They never let me down. Could be a winter and you'll still see some chickadees it could just the birds never let me down. I always find peace in bird song. I always find peace in seeing a hummingbird. I always find peace in birds because it's extremely healing for the soul. And that's another thing too. Bees are one of my favorites. Summertime bees, my favorite. I'll go on the ground on the grass right by some clover and I'll just watch a bee right on the red clover or white clover and I'll watch it and the noise it makes and I'll see it and it'll just be buzzing around on the buttercup, buzzing around on the buttercup, buzzing around on the red clover, buzzing around on the white clover. What this does for the soul is so powerful. I can't even say it enough. Five minutes of this on the grass, five minutes of this with a bee just right in front of you watching it or on a flower and watching bees on a flower, bumblebees. That's another one too. Really healing. Bees have an essence. They have a presence. They have, they have light around them. They're here to actually help us. They always have been. You know, and, and so it's the symbiotic relationship we have with bees Just by hearing though and watching them on a flower, seeing the vision with your own eyes at one time some summer, one time some fall or some spring where you see a bee 
and it's dancing on some buttercups, dancing on a red clover flower, dancing on a white clover flower, dancing on a, a, um, a dandelion flower. And oh my God, it's such a stress release. It's more than just a stress release. It's more than just a stress release. I mean, it's, it's miraculous, really. So that's another thing that I really love to restore the, the heart, the soul, everything like that. And then, you know, if you can get like, look, we did a garden show. If you can get, if you can pick any kind of vegetables or fruit at one time a year or go to a farmer's market and mean meaning in, or go to a farm where they, they pick your own or an apples, pick your own apples. If you can just do that once, that's a meditation that's healing for the soul in so many ways. It's incredible. It's incredible to, for healing for the soul. So these are just some powerful ways of helping us na- nature wise then they're and they're simple many of them are so simple you can just you can gaze up at the stars you can get outside and get five minutes of sun on your skin i know a lot of people who are chronically ill it's hard for them to get five minutes of sun on your skin i totally get it and you just you, you know as you're recovering you can try to get five minutes and you could try to get 10 minutes you try to get 10 minutes of sun on your skin Try, try not to go with the heat of the day if it's summertime where it's, it's, it's you know, 90, 85 degrees, 90 degrees, and the sun's just beating on you for 15, 20 minutes. You know, be careful if you're somebody that's sensitive. You're somebody that's sensitive to the sun in that sense, and you're somebody who's chronically ill or struggling or anything like that. But just getting five minutes of sun it restores the soul, restores the spirit, strengthens the spirit of the soul, which is the will, the will to fight each day, the will to push through, the will to want to heal, the will to want to get better. Healing, just like I've said on the healing path, is a lot of things. It's using your creativity in any way possible. It's doing these healing meditations any way possible. It's getting into nature. It's eating the right foods. It's taking even the right supplements. It's knowing what's causing your illness and the truth behind your illness and disease. It's having any kind of resources around you, like a family or a friend or somebody, some support. And if you don't, you can still heal with other avenues. It takes a lot of things. There's so many different facets to healing. There's so many different parts and pieces, and this is one of them. And it matters. I've used them in my life and others too, meaning like other varieties of this that spirit has taught me. You know, I've gone into the woods a lot lot in my life and that's one been one blessing of mine that I've been able to get into the woods a little bit and to pick wild herbs that spirit said were safe to eat. Although stay away from those poisonous mushrooms, I'll tell you. I picked some mushrooms that Spirit said was all right to eat, and I ate them. But I know that I was uh, I was on a <laughs> I was on a trail with a couple of friends years ago, and they were mushroom experts. I mean, mushroom experts. When I mean mushroom experts, you guys, I'll tell you a funny story at the end of the show. And um, and I wasn't a mushroom expert. All I had to do was ask Spirit, and Spirit would say that mushroom's safe to eat. So then I would pick it and eat it, and. Um, but they were mushroom, like they were taught. I mean, not just taught. I mean, they were, they studied and they, I mean, you name it really. I mean, they're professors of mushrooms, I have to say. And we were on a trail together and they, and they, one of the guys said, no, this one's edible. This, this variety is edible. I know this edible. And the other guy that was with them and we were three of us. And, and this guy said, you know, I think that's edible too. I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like, and I think you're right. And they didn't want to go again. They kind of are like, you know, they're battling their wits on it. Like totally, this is, I totally recognize one. This is good. And then I said, you guys, that one's not edible. Spirit tells me that's not edible. And they said, listen, I know you hear spirit. I know that's how you do your mushrooms. One One of the guys was like, listen, I think you're just a mushroom genius and you're not hearing spirit at all and you just happen to know which ones are good and bad. I said, that's not, I'm not a mushroom genius. And oh my God, I would never risk that. And yes, I do hear spirit, of course. A couple of new people I met, it was years and years ago. They were just getting to know me. And and uh, they just thought, one of the guys was like, you just got to be a mushroom genius. That's why you're able to pick mushrooms and know the varieties and whatever. And I said, no, 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 it's spirit. And so they picked this variety, and it looked like an edible variety. It looked like an edible bear's head mushroom, and, but it wasn't. And they were like, no, this one's, this one's edible. I said, it's not. And they said, no, it is. It is. And they took a bite. They both got poisoned. They both got poisoned. 
And um, it was a funny story. But, you know, I've been in the woods. They were okay. They were okay. It's not fun. Never did. They, they were all right. They, they bit a few poisonous mushrooms in their day. They've been in the field. They've been in the bush many times. And they know what it's like to bite a, a bad mushroom. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not good. Anyway, I just want to tell you guys, I love you so much. And uh, back to my story, I've, I've spent a lot of time in, in nature and in, in when I could, when I could, you know, not all the time. I've spent years not going near nature, not being able to have an opportunity. And then I've had years in my childhood, also years on and off in my 20s where I was, you know, able to do that. Um, anyway, I love you guys. Little personal stuff, little personal story. Listen, just take one day at a time. Know that I care. I'm so proud of everybody. I can't even tell you how proud of everybody I am. Take, try to tr- apply some of these again, if you can. Try to apply some of these. I know some of you that have been with me a long time have used some of these, but then have forgotten how powerful they are because you just move on with life and so many things and distractions. I hear some of you are still doing, I'm sure. But take one day at a time. Know I love you. And uh, bless your hearts. I'll see you next show. I can't wait. God bless you.